Let's bring in Ethan Behrman, a liberal radio talk show host, Left Coast News, attorney and co-chair of Hometown Values Pack. I'm sorry that we're a little shortened here, uh, but it's good to have you on the new show, Ethan. Um, give you a chance first before we get to 2020 real quick on impeachment. What are your thoughts? Well, look, this is it's a clear process laid out in our Constitution. The Democrats are following it. And more oddly is the White House counsel is the one asking to rush it with his letter that came out on Friday. There's plenty of basis here for the Democrats to move forward. They're documenting it. The Republicans have been part of all of the hearings from day one. So this is a normal and political process. It's not a civil trial. It's not a criminal trial. The House is like a grand jury. The president has declined to participate as well. This is moving forward the way it should. Where are we on 2020, meanwhile? Because there are a lot of Republicans on the Hill, and you heard one of uh, the Republican congresswomen saying this, that essentially you can't beat the president at the ballot box, so you're trying to impeach him. Well, I don't think that's right. I think doing the right thing when a president is violating numerous federal laws allegedly is being put forth in the impeachment. We haven't answered the emoluments question. We have a lot of different issues that are moving forward. Doing the right thing, even when you don't complete a crime, is still something that gets charged in regular courts, and that's what the Democrats are moving forward with here. I it makes sense. I want to read something from Salon.com. They had an interesting story where uh, they're going after the president, of course, but they come after the Democrats. They say Trump's corruption and criminality, they claim, and his war against American democracy and the Constitution will not be enough motivation for a sufficient number of voters to reject him at the polls. To force him from the White House and into a life of shame, they say, the Democrats must answer some fundamental questions. What do they stand for? What vision of a better America do they propose? And how will they make it real? Without that clarity of vision, there is little hope of victory. So, Ethan, this is a liberal publication calling out your party. How do you answer that? Instead oh. of just investigating the president, what's your party's vision? Yeah, I think it's, it's I think that's a great point. And impeachment is not about an election. It's not about nullifying an election. It's not about 2020. That is a separate process. So the primary is about the election. You know, talk about Mayor Buttigieg. But Joe Biden is on a roll. He has a long track record to demonstrate what he will do for America when he wins the Democratic primary nomination and runs in the general election against Donald Trump. That's what that is about. And, and, and Joe Biden is absolutely laying that vision out to, to conflate the two is to is a mistake. Uh, there was an interesting uh, little bit on Saturday Night Live last night. They're usually poking fun at the president, but let's see if we can sneak this in before the news conference. They went after the Speaker of the House. Watch. I am not impeaching Trump because I hate him. I pray for him all the time. Lord, please help Donald Trump. If he has to be president, please make him a little better at any of it. And please take him, not to heaven or anything, just somewhere else. His prayers are a little passive-aggressive. No, no, no. Some of them are aggressive-aggressive. Well, she's invoked her Catholic faith this week, insisting she doesn't hate the president, of course, and also has insisted she's entering this impeachment process prayerfully. What does it tell you that maybe not even Saturday Night Live is buying that? Oh, I, I think it's interesting because, remember, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party was actually the ones pushing her, saying, why are you dragging your feet? I think she was very... Um, very deliberate in this process. She's absolutely followed the facts where they lead and, and done it in a, in a fashion that will stand up to scrutiny, which it is. And, and therefore, you know, when she says she doesn't hate the president and she prays for him, I, I take her at face value for that. Okay, so let's get back to 2020 uh, as we await this news conference it's about to go live in Pensacola, which is, um, you know, I teed it up with, with Pete Buttigieg, what he's doing. He still leads some of the polls there in Iowa. Uh, but as you know, the former Vice President Joe Biden is trying to make a surge, you know, kind of have a surge there with the no malarkey bus tour. Some people sort of laughed that off as critics. <laughs> Uh, and then he got the endorsement of John Kerry. Still doesn't have the endorsement of former President Obama. Uh, real quick, what are your thoughts on where we are with Biden and Buttigieg? Well, that's interesting. Mayor Buttigieg is showing that he's new to national politics with some of the things that are tripping him up. Joe Biden, we know Joe Biden. We know exactly who he is, where he's been, what he stands for, how he's led on environmental issues since the 1980s in the Senate. He's strong. He has people of color support in many states, South Carolina, Nevada, and others. That's where Mayor Buttigieg is doing well in Iowa, which is not represented demographically mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party across the nation. I think uh, Joe Biden is in great shape moving forward. All right. Well, you saw just a live picture there of him a moment ago. He's still with John Kerry. Now they're in New Hampshire. Uh, remember, John Kerry was uh, left for dead in Iowa and ended up winning it with a late surge. Joe Biden obviously trying to repeat that. Ethan Behrman, we appreciate having you today, and we hope to have you back soon. Thanks so much, Ed. All right.